So anyway, all right. So Father, we just thank you for tonight. I thank you for everyone represented. I, uh, I'm just thankful for who you are. I'm thankful that you're more real than anything else that we'll encounter. I thank you that you're more real than any fear that's out there. I thank you that you're more real than any regulation that's out there. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that you are still in control. And Father, I thank you that you are the one who guides us and directs us and leads us. And Father, we listen to you first. We're single-minded to what you think. We're not double-minded to what you think. So Father, my prayer for all of us is that we're able to hear your voice. And Father, that we're able to walk with you in that joy that comes from walking and being in your voice, Father. Tremendous strength in that area, Lord. I would not give anything for it. I mean, that is the most, to me, that's the most powerful place to live. And so, Father, thank you for that opportunity to walk with you, to sup with you, to, to, to fill your chest whenever you're breathing, to fill your breath on my head whenever you're, I'm sitting on your lap. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to grow in you. And, Father, I pray for everyone that's here tonight, Lord. I, I, I thank you that this is not an accident. It's not a mistake. And, Father, we move forward in who you are and what you do. And, Father, I thank you for every single person who came tonight, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And they said... Wow. Let's turn to Psalms 91, verse 13, Thomas. We're going to talk about the two lions. Wow, you're already there. Holy ghost. Wow. Man. Wow. Okay. Here we go. You. Who is that? Put your name in there. Say it with your name. You shall. Shall is a very strong word. I flunked English, but I know that shall is a, is a, is a very powerful. What is it? Is it a preposition? What is it? It's an adverb, an adjective. What is it, Tori? You shall. Thank you. I knew that. You shall tread. What does that mean, tread? Walk on. Tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. So let's break this down. Who is the lion? Who's the lion here? Satan, yeah. And the cobra, who would the cobra be? His servants, right? The young lion would also be would also be the younger de demonic entities, right? And the serpent, you shall trample underfoot. Now, if you look in Psalms, Psalms talks about the serpent. The serpent is, well, let me just read this to you, okay? You don't have to go there. This is Psalms 57, verse 4. My soul is amongst lions. I live among the sons of men who are set on fire, whose teeth are spears, and they're like sharp swords. Have you ever done something and somebody's spoken against you? It hurts, doesn't it? And 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 I mean the more that and I mean the more that you're trying to share your point of view to justify what you did, the worse it gets. Right? No, you're not. And I mean, they, uh, it's, it's, you know, the Holy Ghost told me one day, I'll never forget this. Somebody had, had misunderstood what I said and it really hurt. And the Lord says, people will always misjudge what you say sometimes. And for you to justify what you were trying to say, all you can say sometimes is, I'm sorry, forgive me. That's about as far as you can get. The rest of it's up to them. Why am I going down this road? I don't know. Anyway, you shall, you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. Let me ask you this question. Is there a lot of fear out there right now? Okay. And he's telling us the fear comes from the lion. See, there's, see, there's, see, there's two lions. There's, there's the lion of the tribe of Judah, who is Jesus. And then this is the serpent. Remember, he says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord sets up a standard. Okay, the lion as a seeking lion trying to consume who he may devour. What's the food he eats on? Fear, right? So do you remember last week? Remember last week we were. Hey, Dale, how you doing? Good to see you, man. Was well, that your bike out in the? Cool. Do you remember last week we were talking about the atmosphere? How the atmosphere changes? So, so what the enemy wants to do? Any atmosphere we get we get in is the atmosphere we're going to live in. So if you notice, any time fear comes, the atmosphere starts to change immediately. So what the Holy Ghost is saying is you shall tread upon. So somebody, somebody give me a quick scripture where it says something about Jesus' feet. 
He's put all things under his feet. All things under his feet. How about, um, how about Joshua 1.3? Wheresoever the sole of your foot shall tread, that have I given unto you. Okay, let's go to, let's, let's, let's go to Luke 10, 19. Okay, you know, I didn't know people talked about you until you became a pastor. Most interesting thing in the world. It was the most interesting thing in the world. Why anybody would, would follow the call of God unless God spoke to them in their heart? Because people sometimes won't understand what you're doing. But that's okay, because you're honoring God. So why am I telling you this? Because you're going to do it, yeah. So behold, I give you authority to trample. Now, that's a conditional statement. I give you authority to trample. Right? You've got it. So you were in the military, right? So if you saw... If you saw uh, clusters or leaves or stars on the, on the, or whatever, what did that mean to you? Person of authority, right? Now, Karen says something. I, I heard Karen say something the other day. The devil knows who we are, right? Uh, the people around us know who we are, but we don't know who we are sometimes. Because of the fact that we've lived in our skin. We see ourselves, right, according to the way we were raised. So how many of you had a really, really uh, loving, engaging, enduring parent who, who, uh, who gave you words of affirmation growing up? Raise your hands. There's a few. Okay. How many of you didn't? Yeah. So isn't it interesting how God is changing our thinking to some degree? So I think, I think what the Holy Ghost wants to do tonight is get us into a position to where there's no fear out there. Because I'll tell you what's going on out there right now. They need us to stand up and be who we are. That's what they need. They need to know that it's okay. They need to know that there's an answer. They don't need to be afraid of, 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 uh, of what's going on. I, I cannot remember the last time I got sick. Because I take the word of God. The other day, I was, I was jogging. And someone, uh, someone you, know, you know that thought that comes into your head that's not you? Like, I'm going to give you cancer? Have you ever had one of those thoughts cross your head? I'm going to give you cancer. You know, your dad had cancer. You're going to have cancer. Has anybody ever heard that before? Never? That thought's never crossed your mind? Or you're going to get sick? Or, you know, I'm, 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 I'm taking the flu or any of those kind of things? Have you, has anybody ever dealt with that? Sure. Was that your mind or was that somebody else? Hey, they're okay, guys. They're okay. I can, they're, not, they're, not, they're not bugging me. We're start, you guys are all okay, right? Hey, we're just going a week at a time, man. We're, we're looking for internet next. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, so we got chairs. We got carpet. We got lights. So now we're going for internet. So we're just taking it a week at a time. So when that thing talks to you, who's talking to you? The enemy, right? Is that you thinking that? I mean, we're not walking down the street thinking, hey, I think today I'll, think I'll, I'll take some cancer on. Who thinks that way? Nobody, right? So the way I answer him now is I say, you know what, thank you so much for saying that, because I believe I'm going to take on 1 Peter 2.24. That says, by his stripes I'm healed. Thank you for saying that. I'm going to use you as an alarm clock. Now think about this. Every time those thoughts come, or fear comes, or that, or that tormenting thing that comes in the middle of the night that's, that some people deal with, right? Every time that thing comes, I'm going to start using him as an alarm clock to worship God. Every time depression comes, thank you, depression, for coming. Now I get to go worship God. So what do you think will happen after a while? <laughs> it works, I'm telling you. I was so fed up. I used to have night terrors. Has anybody ever had night terrors? Let me tell you what they are. You're asleep and you wake up, but your body won't wake up. Has anybody been there? That's satanic. That's the devil. And I couldn't beat them. I, I tried, man. I was doing everything I could to beat these things. So, you know what he said to me one night? The, the devil is so arrogant. It's incredible. He says to me, I'm going to come tonight and there's nothing you can do about it. Have you ever heard that? I'm going to come tonight and there's nothing you can do about it. And you know what? I said, if you do, I'll get up and pray and worship for an hour. 
It's the middle of the night. So sure enough, he came. He did come. And I woke up and I said, okay, I told you. I told you that I would. So I got up and I worshiped for an hour in the middle of the night. And I had a job. I had everything going on. I got up and just got in my chair in my living room and started worshiping God. If he's going to hassle me, I'm going to worship God. If he's going to put fear on me, I'm going to change my atmosphere. He is not going to push me around. So I started worshiping God. You know, I said after that, I said, if you come again, I'll stay up all night and worship God. Now, the devil does not want you doing this number. Not at all. Not even close. Because that is the power. Because, because what does that do? Worshiping God does what? What does it do? Dispels darkness because of what do we do? He manifests the praises of the people, which does what? Changes the atmosphere. You get, give her 10 points. Glory to God. Haven't given out points in a while. You get them tonight. <laughs> it's good seeing you again. You, you used to get points before. I remember you. I do remember you getting points. Hallelujah. All right. Now, look at this. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. So not only are we going to deal with, with, with the things of the spiritual world, we're now going to deal with the things in the natural when people come against us and say things. And over all the power, over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. See, most of the time, the fear that comes really can't affect or hurt you. But it can sure scare the peewot out of you. It can sure torment you. It can sure show you, throw you in a hole. Right? Holy Ghost doesn't like that. Do you know why he doesn't like that? Because we can't go do Father's business. So what is Father's business? Seeking and saving those who were lost. When I'm in torment, I'm thinking about who? Myself. Me. Me, myself, and I. Right? But when I'm in a place of peace and rest, I can start to listen to what the Holy Ghost says. And, you know, we've talked about this before. Next time you're depressed or down, go minister to somebody. Go witness to somebody. You know, Thomas is talking about the other night he was at Walmart and God told him to go knock on a guy's window in a, in a truck at, what, 12 o'clock at night or 1 o'clock in the morning or something? And tell him God loves him. You know, I mean, that sounds crazy, right? But how do you feel after you do it? You feel good. Yeah. But if you do get shot, where do you get to go? Heaven. Heaven. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's a win-win. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There's a guy that knows he's forgiven. Oh, Colossians 2.15. Let's turn there real quick. Are you guys getting anything out of that? I want to leave here with hope. And I, and I mean, I want us to get lit up again. Do you know angels walk with you? You know, you have an angel army that walks with you. And isn't it weird? All these angels are walking with you and we're like, we're not real sure what's going on. So we're kind of freaking out a little bit. Like, oh, I don't know what's going on. And the angels are like, are you serious, dude? Look, we're all ready to go. We're, we all, everybody's got their armor on, but you. <sighs> all right. Having disarmed. Ooh, I like that. Having disarmed principalities and powers he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them in it so there's four levels of demonic entities right there's spiritual wickedness in high places which is the lowest there's rulers of darkness which is the next level there's powers which goes up even higher now you're talking about uh, um, over regions that kind of thing and principalities that have whole nations He's already talking about overcoming the top two demons. So you know good and well that if he overcame them, anything else below that, he's defeated. Right, Dale? Has to follow suit. If I get the general, I got the corporals. If I get the sergeant, I got the privates. Don't I? So let me ask you this. Is there a principality and a power right now trying to mess with our country? We can't lose hope. That's the most important thing. And we can't say, oh, well, here it goes. Because God has given us the authority. Let me tell you something. 
Who was it who prospered in famine? Was it uh, Jacob? Isaac. Isaac prospered in famine. The worst possible scenario, he prospers. We're going to prosper regardless if we choose to. When the Lord first called me into ministry, true story, I was making serious six figures and living in a big house. And everybody thought that I was wealthy. And at one time I was. But when you quit your job, guess what? The bills keep coming. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Right? So he goes, it's time to go full time. And I'm like, I'm making a lot of money. Time to go full time. I said, okay, we'll go full time. So I talked to my pastor and my, and my, and my elder. Okay? My spiritual fathers. And said, this is what I'm doing. So there's got to be a divine order in how you do things. Like if, like if you want to leave a work, if you ever want to leave a ministry or a work, get a blessing first. Don't just leave. Because there's things that follow you if you don't get a blessing. You really, I mean, you got to do it in order. You got, you got to do it in order. So, so, I, so I went to these guys. And I'm saying, am I supposed to do this? And they said, yes. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I was hoping you'd say no. <laughs> Has anybody ever been afraid? Like you're on the side of a building, right? Has anybody been on a high dive? Who's been on a high dive? Remember the first time you're thinking, okay, I'm on a high dive. This is logical not to jump off this thing, right? And you're thinking it out, right? That's where I was. I was on this spiritual high dive. And I'm thinking, do I do this? Do I not do this? Do I go? Do I not go? But I knew I had to because it kept burning in my heart. You know, the Lord says, you'll be out of here before you're 40. It was two weeks before my 40th birthday. God remembers those things. If he said them to you, he remembers them more than we do. He believes that that thing he stuck in our heart, we're going to do it. He believes that. We don't even believe it sometimes, but he believes it. He believes you're going to win a whole country. Did you know that? That's what he believes. What do you believe? But can you do it? If you line up with him, if you hang with him. See, here's the secret to, 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 to getting miracles from God. Hang around with him. Because you become like him. Okay, I'm way off the point. So anyway, so the Lord, so, so I went full time. For two years, I didn't get an invite. And the bills kept coming. Didn't get an invite. So I was like, okay, that's, uh, that's not cool. Because if you're a minister, you know what you're doing? Hey, here's my card. Uh, here's, here's my ministry. Here's, here's, here's what we do. You're out trying to make a living. Uh, let's just be honest. Some ministries is just a business. So I, I said, Lord, what do I do? He says, why don't you go to the church and pray? Boy, that was hard. Have you ever prayed when you had no money coming in? Yeah, it's been interesting, right? So I sat there for two years. Do you know that during that time, we had $107,000 given to us by people out of the blue? Craziest thing in the world. I mean, I can remember one day my, my wife went to go pray at the church. And she came back, somebody gave her a check for $10,000. Now, when does that happen? You know what I told her? Go back and pray again. Pray some more. <laughs> I'm serious, man. I know what it's like to get down to where there's nothing left. You're past the due date, right? And then the electricity is still on and the water's still going. And the only thing I knew to do is we invited people in and we fed as many people as we could. We had people over one day to come eat. We invited them. We had nothing in the house. Nothing. I mean, nothing. And somebody knocks on the front door and it was a girl with two sacks of groceries. I'm like, hallelujah. Just at that time, right? Another time my daughter was, uh, gosh, she was about 13 and it was after, it was after church. And she goes, are we going to go out to eat with everybody? And I had exactly no money, none. And I'm sitting there going, hang on for a minute. I could just feel God moving. I could feel something moving. And I look over and this lady's got this look on her face. Like God stalked her and she's not sure. Have you ever had that happen to you? Where, where they're kind of coming at you sheepishly and they're going, I don't mean to offend you. <laughs> but, and you're, and you're like, you're not offending me. You're not. What is it? Hurry. <laughs> anyway, she hands us $50 saying, I, I, I don't, I don't want to offend you. And as she walked off, I said, we're going out to eat today. Now, those are great stories, right? But I like it better when the money is in the checking account more than when it's not. But the whole thing is, is that God met our needs. Remember, uh, was it, who was, who was the prophet that he, he, he stayed at the river and remember the birds, the ravens brought him food. Who was that? Elijah. That's right. Elijah. 
All right. So the whole point is God's got this thing, man. He's got us. Let's go to first. Let's go to second Corinthians four, four. No, let's don't. Let's don't. Let's don't. I want to shift. I want to shift. So, so, so we're talking the two. If, if I go there, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to be done in 30 minutes. So my goal is to, is to honor what I said to you guys. Whew, that's hard when you're a preacher. Glory to God. I see a whole path down that way. You know what I mean? Anyway. Okay. So let's talk about the two lions. So we know the devil is, is, is one of the lions. Who's the other lion? Lion of Judah. Do you guys know what Judah means? Praise. Do you know what some of it means? Thanksgiving. He's from, he's the lion of the tribe of praise. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of praise. Do you remember Paul and Silas are in the prison, right? They're going to be executed. So they're in chains in prison. They've prayed. So what's the next thing they did after they prayed? They praised. They praised. They sang song and praised. It didn't happen during the prayer. But it happened during the praise. Why did that happen? Why did, why did it happen that way? Because they changed the atmosphere. They got into faith. See, faith is, he can do it. All things are possible to him who believes. Right? All things are not possible to him who doubts. Now we're into mercy and mercy. Okay. Which is okay. I'll take mercy. I, man, I, man, I've had mercy plenty of times. You know how it is. You're stuck between the dog and a fire hydrant and you can't get out. So anyway, how about another time? Can anybody think of another time whenever they had praise? Praise brought it. Do you remember? What's that? Miriam. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just keep going. Jehoshaphat. There you go. Yeah, because you're reading my notes. Uh, Jehoshaphat's awesome. Yes, I did. Jehoshaphat is awesome. Because he, when he was single-minded to God, what happened? Wonderful things occurred. When he got double-minded to what God said, what happened? Terrible things occurred, right? So he's got these two, or th is it three nations or two nations coming against him? I think it's three, right? That's a lot. It's a bunch because think about it. A threefold cord is not easily broken. So the enemy is really coming hard to take this property. He wants Jehoshaphat's land, right? He wants his kingdom. He's coming hard. He's bringing three people. So the first thing they do is they go on a fast, which is good. Whenever I get it, whenever I get in the grease, you guys know what it means to get in the grease. Whenever I get in the weeds, whenever I get in trouble, whenever I get in the mud, whenever I'm stuck, I stop talking and I stop eating. That's just my way of getting through. So what's cool here is that, is that, is that they pray. A prophet comes forward and prophesies to them, right? And then what's the next thing they do? They praise. They stick, they stick the praise team in front of the army. I mean, can you think about that? Can you imagine if you're in the war and you send the band in front of the tanks and the infantry and the, and the cavalry? What kind of deal is that? I think God just does this sometimes just to mess with people. Don't you think? So these guys turn on each other and kill each other. So by the time they come to fight, they're all dead. So you know what they did? Just cleaned up, picked up the spoils. So how does that apply to us today? Okay, so think about it. So you can fast, you can pray. So, I mean, I mean, think about it. You, you read the news uh, or you listen to the news, right? So, uh, nice shirt, by the way. You, you, you follow the news and the news is saying this, that, and the other, right? You go to work and they're saying this, that, and the other. Have you ever walked into a place wondering if people liked you or didn't like you? Right? Has anybody been there besides me? Oh, you were going to say something. You, you had something to say. By faith. Okay. So how, okay, so did you hear what she said? We have faith that he's going to take care of us. How do we do that? How do we know he's going to take care of us? I mean, how do we really know? Did you say that? Oh, she did. Okay, mom said it. 
Leah said it. How else do you know? Okay, so hang on for one second. Go ahead. Well, he's stepping on the ground. He gave us the steps. Yeah, he gave us the step. Go ahead, brother. Into your heart. Yeah, I heard that. The quickest way I know to do that is to do this. Right? And do you know what's even cooler than this? You know what's even cooler than doing this with music? Without music. Has anybody just worshipped without music? Just sit there and spend time saying, Father, I love you. Jesus, I love you. I exalt you. I'm at it. You know, I always had this struggle with the Holy Ghost. Didn't know where to put him, you know? Do I worship him? Do I talk to him? Uh, how do I, you know, what do I do with him? <laughs> right? Like, like, where do you put the Holy Ghost? And uh, you know what I learned to do? Holy Ghost, I worship you. I worship you. See, one day Jesus, you know, we always say, well, if Jesus was here, it'd be different, right? Has anybody said that? I mean, I mean, we've heard that a lot, right? If Jesus was here, it'd be different. Do you know what he said? He says, if I don't go, Holy Ghost isn't coming. So if he comes, the Holy Ghost goes back again. I don't want any of that. I want the Holy Ghost here. So the Holy Ghost lives inside me. So the greater one lives in me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So Jesus is the lion of the tribe of praise. And some of it says thanksgiving. And he inhabits the praise of his people. So where does he live? In our praise. So if you want to invite him over for dinner, raise your hands. I love you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. You know what I'm saying? How about this? How about if you're, what, how, what if you control the atmosphere? What if you're the one that's aware of him? Have you ever gone into a crowd and just, okay, so all these people, like, 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 you know, right now, who are you most aware of? Are you most aware of me? Cause I'm preaching. Can you sense him right now? Can you guys sense him right now? I mean, if you have to close your eyes for a minute and find him, just cl everybody close your eyes. Okay. So where is he? Do you guys feel him? If you feel him, raise your hands. Keep your eyes closed. Raise your hands. Okay. So let me ask you a question. Okay, now okay, now you can open your eyes. I wish I took an offering during that time. Doggone it. Can that work Tuesday afternoon when your boss has just, you know, jumped all over your case? Can it work when you're worried about your bills? Can it work when you just had a fender bender? I wanted it to work Tuesday afternoon at 3.30. Not Sunday morning at 10 o'clock when, when I was under the anointing. You know, if you're sick and hurting, if something hurts on you, if you preach under the anointing, do you know that pain leaves? Totally leaves. And then the next morning you're like, wait a minute, something just happened. It's the most interesting thing I've ever seen. Anytime, like if you start teaching, the pain will leave because the anointing comes in and takes the pain. Anybody that's preached or, 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 or done anything, have you ever, has, has anybody noticed that? It's incredible. It's incredible. So if it happens there, and God's not a respecter of persons, could it happen at any time? Could, could, uh, could we be aware of him? I want to finish with one last one, and then I'm done. And then, and then I want a couple of you guys to, to uh, give me a really cool testimony. Look, Karen, I made notes. Okay, uh... Check this one out. Though I walk... Okay, let's turn to Psalms 23.5. You guys ever heard the 23rd Psalm? How many of you guys remember, remember when you were growing up and your mom would have you sing, I mean, do this one? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Let's go to the first. Let's just go down to the first. Let's just go down to this thing for just a minute. And then I'm done. Okay, right there. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Okay, so think about this. Sheep are dependent on a shepherd, right? Are goats? No. <laughs> Sheep are single-minded what God's told them to do. Goats have a mind of their own. When I was a kid growing up, we had a goat named Billy. <laughs> Good name, right? Don't ever do like this looking at something. Have you ever been butted by a goat? It hurts. 
Has anybody been butted by a goat? Who's, who's been butted by a goat? All right, all right, no fightings on the, we're, we're, we're in church, you guys can't argue in front of everybody, I mean, really. <laughs> it's okay. Well, anyway, I got, I got hit by Billy, he hit me right here. And do you know when I would go outside, do you know how I'd look, I'd open the door and look like this, you know? Sheep don't do that, at least as far as I know. Because sheep don't have, they don't have claws, right? They don't have incisors, they're not fast. And I think if they fall over, it's pretty hard for them to get back up again. Is that true? They're dependent. And Jesus, th think about how important you are. Jesus will leave the 90 and 9 to come find us. That's not the lost. I mean, that's not the unborn only. That's us. He goes, my sheep. I'll find my sheep. See, whenever we're not finding Jesus, sometimes we're lost a little bit, aren't we? You know, it's like, if you, have you guys been up on, uh, on Casper Mountain? Has anybody walked the trails up there? Have you ever done it in the snow? The trails are gone. You've got to look for the little blue thing, right? Have you ever not found the blue thing? Walked around in corn, you know, you've, you've walked around in circles. You're like, I know, I'm on, I know I'm in Casper. I know my house is that way. I'm pretty sure my car is that way, but I don't know where I am right now. <laughs> Has anybody ever been like that? I got a Bible that says, by his stripes I'm healed, but I'm hurting. It's okay. It's okay. God's not beating us up. He's not. No condemnation if you get sick. No condemnation if you miss it. None of it. We're on this thing where we have to produce. We don't have to produce. We just have to be. Be still. Be. Just be. And the only way you can really be is to be still. And then if you're still, then you know that he's God. He's trying to teach us to be, not to do. You do after he, after he talks to you. Be first. Be. And then you can do. I mean, think about it. When you were growing up, did you go to the, did you go to the refrigerator and say, may I please get a sandwich out of the refrigerator? No. What did you do? You just went in there. And your mom chased you with the spoon. I know, you, I know your mom did. Chased you with the spoon to get out of there, right? Remember when your mom made a cake mix and, and you were trying to get the batters? Did anybody here do that besides me? One day I had this brilliant idea. Glory to God. I made a whole thing of cake mix, Cody. A whole thing of cake mix and got sick. And then I didn't have enough sense to flush it down the toilet. I hid it behind the cabinet. Now, how smart is that? <laughs> anyway. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Have you, remember being a kid laying on the grass and looking up at the clouds? Remember hearing the birds? You know? Today we were hiking and... Uh, we just stopped for a minute, and we could hear the, the, the wind blowing, hear the trees creaking. Just being. Just being. It's like, it's, like, it's like being like a little kid again. He leads me be, beside the still waters, the peaceful waters. Still waters run deep. He's a deep being. This guy is a deep, deep, deep person. Think about it. He never had a beginning. And he never had an ending. He always was. And we're going to argue with that. I mean, can you relate to that at all? I can't. God never had a beginning. He never had an ending. He just always was. I can mentally assent to it. Anyway. He restores my soul. What is the soul? What is the soul? He's going to restore my soul. What is that? Yes, mind, will, and emotions. He restores it. So, so what's he doing? He's doing a factory reset. Have you ever rebooted your computer? And it runs better? Has your computer ever got really, really clogged up? And so you reboot it, and what does it do? It's like, ah, thank you. Right? You know what God's doing? If you'll let him, let him, let him push the button on your noggin. Let him push it and, re and uh, reboot you. There's nothing wrong with that. By the way, Sherry, a defrag is a deliverance. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. What's he saying? He leads me in the paths of righteousness. Now that my mind is restored, now I can start walking the way that he wants me to. It's a day-by-day -day thing. This is not a... It's not easy. But it's a day-by-day -day thing. And it's easier if we're not... If we don't feel condemnation over where we are and where we're walking. 
If you want to hang with a guy that misses it a lot, come hang with me. The other morning, the Holy Ghost got me up. I repented for three hours. Just over stuff that I think, and, and this is not a condemnation session. It's just, I just want so much to do what God wants me to do. And sometimes I choose my own way and I'm like, Father, I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry. I mean, you guys know what I mean. It's not a condemnation point. It's just a point where I want to get closer to him to where I can share with him. Okay. Uh, for his name's sake. So everything is in Jesus' name. Remember, he puts all things under his feet with the name of Jesus. These signs shall follow those who believe in my name. Okay, so, so, so we're back to that. His name is the thing that we use to put things under our feet. You can't do it on your own. You can try it, but it won't be too good. Okay, here we go. Now, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You know what that sounds to me like? You're going to walk through it. You're not going to get out of it. I mean, for people that think that we're going to get through this thing without problems, I don't know where that comes up. But we're going to have issues. We just are. Because, because we're in this world. I will fear no evil. In other words, you're not going to take my atmosphere. Okay? Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And let's go to the very last one. And then I'm done. Let's go up one more. Verse 5. There you go. Now, okay, look at this one. You prepare... A table before me. Mm. You remember being a kid and coming home? And, so for, and for some of your moms who worked so hard, thank you for making meals for all of us. That didn't, we didn't respect it. We didn't understand it. We were just dumb kids who ran in and expected you to do everything for us. But do you remember what you put in to that meal for us growing up, you moms? Remember all the work you did? And you, and I mean, you made that cake and you made that casserole and we engulfed it in 23 seconds. He's preparing a table for us the same way in the presence of who? You're not going to get away from this. This is not going to happen, but, but we can surely sit here and eat. And all he's asking us to do is to come to the table. And in the table's healing and the table's freedom and the table's peace. And the table is, is, is um, clarity. And the table is um, righteousness, joy. That's, that's what's at the table. And here's the cool thing. The table is actually a buffet. It's an all you can eat. You can come back as much as you want and live at the table. So how do I live at the table? How do I do that? How would I, how would I live at the table? How would I stay out of this world? Rest in God. So I so 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 number one, I ease up on myself. So we'll start there. Number two, I find something that works in here, but I ease up on myself. I I, I can't get that out enough. Right now, the body is walking in so much condemnation. It's incredible. We have to ease up on ourselves. We're okay. We're going to be okay. Our heart is to follow God. God knows that. God knows that. I got to tell myself this all the time because, because I can easily, Karen can tell you, I'm trying to build a new website. I'm trying to put a new Facebook thing up. I'm trying to open up a new bank account. I'm trying to do whatever, 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 whatever. And sometimes I'm so busy that I can't, I, I, I forget to go just sit down and be with him. So, so to, so to come to the table, I say, father, I'm going to come to the table. So today at the table, I think I'm going to eat praise. I'll take an order of praise. Thank you. So I'm just going to worship God. I'm just going to, Father, I worship you. Father, I just bless you. Father, I thank you that you're in control. Regardless of what's going on around me, regardless of what, what the news media is saying, regardless of anything that's going on, Father, I just worship you. My friend Norval Hayes, good friend of mine. Has anybody ever heard of Norval Hayes? If Norval Hayes ever got in your swimming pool, glory to God. It took four hours to get him out. Man, that guy, you talk about a guy who likes to be in water. Holy smokes. Norval said to me one day, he says, you'll never find somebody who died of a terminal disease who worshiped God an hour a day. Raise their hands and just worship God an hour a day. I didn't say it, Norval said it. If you ever read his book, How to Live and Not Die, he talks about worshiping God. You know what his secret is? Proclaim what you want and just worship God for an hour. 
just, there was a lady, I, I met the lady, she had a disease, and she walked around this coffee table a thousand times a night just worshiping God. Now, now, do you have to do that? You don't have to. And God's not going to do everybody the same. But the whole point is, if it's depression, if it's fear, you know, if it's any of those things. I know what it's like to go into a room and turn the lights off. And let that thing come in where there's no hope. I know what that's like. I know what it's like to have hopelessness. Because I'm eating at the wrong table. See, two tables are set. I'm eating at the wrong table. I'm eating at the fear table. I'm not eating at the faith table. So, anyway. He anoints my head with oil. What's the oil? What is oil good for? Everybody can answer this, but Karen Duvall. What is oil good for? Healing. Healing. What's that, John? Helps things. <laughs> That's pretty good there. Didn't think of that one. I'm going to steal that from you. My cup runs over. What does that mean? I'm the God that's more than enough. Hallelujah. Does anybody have any thoughts? Any questions? Here's the thing. There's a lot going on right now, okay? There's a lot going on out there. I mean, we got people who are dealing with all kinds of scenarios and situations. If you follow the news media, it seems really bleak. So what, I, so what I want to do is I want to follow the news media as much as I can. I want to follow the news media as much as I can. Because he says, a thousand will fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand and it shall not come nigh you. He'll make a way of escape every single time if we follow the plan and stay with him. Yep. The things that we blow off that we think are not enough or not good enough are the things that he's looking for. It's the little things. It's not the big things. It's the little bitty things. So, Father, we thank you. And, Father, I just, I thank you for Thanksgiving. And, Father, I thank you for family. I look around this room, and, Father, there's a story with every single face. And, Father, I thank you for the new faces I'm seeing tonight, Father. And, Father, I, I just... I just, I just worship you just because we can worship you. I just worship you because I can stop and, and just praise you. Father, I thank you that Jesus came and made a way for me so that I could do that. He came and made a way for all of us so that, so that, so that we could do that. So I got a question. Is there anyone here who, who does not play something just a soft, something a little bit soft, okay? Is there anyone here that does not know Jesus as your Savior or as your Lord? Anyone at all? Cool. Okay. Is there anyone here that needs any help with some prayer? Hey, thanks for watching today. Uh, enjoyed the time with you. Uh, if you need prayer or if you need uh, somebody to stand with you in agreement, uh, give us a call or come to hisoutpouring.com or you can send an email to brad at hisoutpouring.com. So every Saturday at 630, go to hisoutpouring.com. You'll see a link to the service where you can tie in with us. Uh, you, can, you can come to see us here in Wyoming. We meet every Saturday at 6 o'clock. You're more than welcome to join us. So have a great week and we'll see you next week.